friends, and welcome to a beer review. Who knows how much time I'll have left for doing beer and whiskey reviews. Um, I finally got a job, and I start next week, Monday, and it pays less than what I'm getting on unemployment, and um, requires me to commute to town, which is about an hour's trip both way, you know, one way, so hour in, hour out. Um, that's life, you know? <laughs> Can't be helped. So, let's just go and uh, make peace with what we have and review what we have on hand. And what tomorrow brings, well, is what tomorrow brings. Okay, said ah, said ah. Whatever will be, will be. But for now, there's Celebration 2014. Now, this is Sierra Nevada's um, seasonal special. Unlike most seasonal specials, it's in IPA as opposed to winter warmer. And, you know, it actually fits in very, very well with it. And so let's read the label, shall we? Because they always got good, um, they always got, what is it? Um, yeah, some ad thing they got. A special ale for the holidays, Celebration IPA features the first hops of the growing season. This pioneering ale is full of complex flavors and aromas from the generous use of whole cone American hops. We first brewed Celebration IPA in the winter of 1981. Each year we use only the first fresh hops of the growing season to create this, this complex and robust ale. Layered pine and citrus hop aromas delicately balance delicately against rich malt sweetness to shape this bold wintertime classic. I have to say this is one of my favorite IPAs. Um, it's 6.8 ABV, so it's kind of a high amped IPA. Uh, I love beer. And it is really fresh. I, there's nothing that beats the smell of a fresh IPA. I'm trying to use the correct pronunciation this time. Okay. Got a nice finger full of, fingers worth of tannish, yellow tannish head, yellowish white tannish head, and a nice orangey copper um, color to it. Can't really see too well because the uh, light's not too good on your guys' side, but yeah, it's kind of orangey copper. Slightly cloudy, which um, fits in with the fact that it's bottle conditioned as opposed to forced carbonated. Beautiful carbonation welling up from within. And it smells like a Christmas tree. Literally, the strongest note is of pine, um, a very fresh pine. Underneath that, um, florals. Very bready, very bready malts, um, dry bready malts. Also a point I would say crackery. Hints of grapefruit and citrus zest. Let's have at it, shall we? Hmm. It is very nice and complex. I'm holding it full hand because I want it to warm up a bit. Because um, it gets as this one warms, it opens up quite a bit. Mildly prickly carbonation, almost chewy, but still not. I wouldn't say it's chewy. Um, it's, it's pretty. Um, it's on the thicker side of mouthfeel. Immediate up front, 
is grapefruit. It almost feels like my morning glass of grapefruit juice, really, in the front. A nicely bitter finish um, that really, really lingers on the tongue, leaving um, not just bitterness, but also the taste of, um, you know, citrus zest, lemon zest, orange zest, all that nice zest, you know, all that rind, citrus rindiness that, on that tongue. The malts don't make a great amount of show in the flavor. There is, like I said, a dry breadiness there. And also as it warms, it hasn't warmed to that point yet, but I'm remembering from when I drank it before, it starts getting a very brief hit of sweet, sweetness there, um, right in the mid-palate. You know, and it's there and gone. And oh, where was I going with that? Just um, leaves, very long, lingering, flavorful bitterness to it. Not just bitterness, I mean like flavor there. Hints of pine resin to that flavor as well. But I would definitely say it's much more of a citrus zest. Just very intense flavors. I love that little whisper of sweetness there too. It's quite nice. Not much in the way of spice, um, but there will be other winter warmers to go and talk about spice. It's really, <clears throat> I like to emphasize, you know, the freshness of this is what makes the um, boldness of it, you know, these hot flavors just kind of pop out and explode. Um, and the importance of having a malt backbone strong enough to support that without it, you know, becoming overwhelming. As it warms, you know, it just develops these more interesting interplays in between um, the malt flavor that's now starting to expand, that sort of um, malt sweetness, and the um, hoppiness. And it's very difficult for me to actually kind of explain it in words. Um, because there's not really, I, I have difficulty kind of explaining taste parallels to what I'm sort of tasting as it warms. I would say it's kind of caramelly, but there's not that sweetness to it. Um, so it's sort of evolving breadiness into the, you know, interplaying with the bitterness. Maybe if you had like spiced bread almost, no, not spiced bread, and say bread with citrus rind baked into it. You no, know, uh, nice kind of like rye bread with citrus rind. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, definitely a sort of caramel note to the sweetness. But, you know, I could go and rant on and on and try to go and put words to something that's very difficult for me to um, qualify. But instead, what I am going to recommend is that you go out and get yourself a six-pack of this yourself. You know, um, it's pretty damn good IPA and is pretty affordable, too. And right now, it's guaranteed to be fresh. You know what I mean? It's going to be like only a month old. It's not going to be one of those year-round um, IPAs where it might have been sitting on the shelf for a while. So if you really want something that gives you a really good example of the fresh hop, freshly made fresh hop IPA, go out and get yourself this. It's a big one for us hop heads. So, that's your beer review for tonight, folks. Cheers, and uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, um, whatevers. Night.